Books Month. Latinx Book Month aims to celebrate Latino and Latina authors by highlighting their works, sharing their stories, and amplifying their voices. The day encourages everyone to dive into books by and for Latino people. It's especially important for schools, libraries, booksellers and publishers to highlight their Latino and Latina authors and promote their work to the greater community. Equally important, this is an opportunity to promote and encourage literacy, education, confidence and curiosity in young Latino writers. Latinx literature, per se, goes all the way back to the 16th century. But Latinx writers made waves in nonfiction and political writing all through the 17th century and beyond. From exile to dissident writing, these became some of the most impactful and influential works of their time. In the States, Latinx literature gained popularity alongside social movements like the Civil Rights Movement. To mark the occasion, let's share some of the latest Latino books you won't want to miss. You're gonna wanna add these to your bookshelves ASAP. Here's some of the winners of the Latino Book Awards 2022. Naturally, we'll kick things off with the health and wellness category. The gold medal went to Sandy Rodriguez, for her work, Choose to Prevail, Unexpected Insights to Help You Overcome Challenges. This is a very topical book, as more and more people seem to struggle with unhealthy levels of worrying and anxiety. This book offers ways to overcome whatever is troubling you, and these methods are, well, unexpected. But this book isn't just about stress, but rather, a guide to live life fully. These are the life skills and wisdom a matriarch would pass down through generations, but full of insight and observations of our modern lives. From self-love and confidence to frustration and stress, Sandy Rodriguez tackles it all. Sounds like a light-hearted summer book to add to the list. Next up we have Xavier Amador with a silver medal for his book, I Am Not Sick, I Don't Need Help. This seems like a touching one, but it's not a light read. Dr. Amador writes about the challenges of helping someone with mental health issues and how to best support them. An important and timely book to educate ourselves and our communities on how to address these difficult conversations. Particularly in Latino communities where this remains a big barrier. Dr. Amador's book is a perfect combination of mind and heart. And the bronze medal went to medical doctor Alejandro Junger for his latest book, The Clean Method. El Método Clean. Although it seems like just another detox book at the surface, Dr. Junger's work is the culmination of 30 years of research and offers scientifically tested insights and learnings on self-care and nutrition for healthy living. Benign fungus. Great title for your memoir. And now, one of my favorite categories, Best Women's Issues Book. Let's do this one in reverse order, starting with the bronze medal recipient, Maho Molfino. Molfino is recognized for her work, Break the Good Girl Myth, how to dismantle outdated rules, unleash your power, and design a more powerful life. Honestly, that is all I need to know. But if you need a little more info, the book breaks down five self-sabotaging tendencies women tend to fall into, and walks the reader through what it will take to break them. The International Latino Book Awards judges concluded that most women who immigrated will recognize themselves in the situations described in this book. I can't wait to read this one. It's time to break the good girl myth. Maria Antonia Bell Bravo was another author recognized in this category for her book. La Mujer en la Historia, Ideología y Realidad, o Cómo Convertir el Destino en Oportunidad. This book offers an amazing exploration of women issues across centuries. The author urges its readership to look at gender roles and power structures objectively, beyond our make-believe modernity and progress. It's an urgent call for action written in that characteristically frank and direct tone that Hispanic readers will recognize all too well. Fernando Repiso received the silver medal for his novel, Six Women Six. The novel has been praised for its authentic and complex character development, and it's a must-read for anyone who enjoys themes of life and death, romanticized existentialism, the burden of the unsaid, and the haunting inevitability of our legacy. Everything about this book seems to encapsulate traditional Hispanic literature to its very core. A modern classic. Add to cart. And the gold medal went to the Emmy Award-winning co-host of The View, and legal journalist, Sunny Hostin and her recently released memoir. Her memoir is said to offer an intimate look at identity, intolerance, and injustice throughout her life. Her account of being asked, or questioned, about her identity at different stages of success, life, or career, is certainly one that will resonate with countless Latinos, immigrants and racialized minorities everywhere. What are you? 
has followed Sunny Hostin from the beginning of her story, as she grew up half Puerto Rican and half African American in the South Bronx. A bestseller that might just be a little more than a pretty cover. Steve Levine spent 12 years researching bilingualism in the States, including fellowship years at both Harvard and Stanford, and uncovered some key reasons why teaching global languages is increasingly important. He was awarded the gold medal in Best Latino Focused Nonfiction Book Award for his book, America's Bilingual Century How Americans Are Giving the Gift of Bilingualism to Themselves, Their Loved Ones, and Their Country. The author's adoption of Spanish as his second language led him to become a champion of bilingualism in the United States, a path that he believes can lead to a stronger, healthier nation. Definitely a good pick for nonfiction lovers. And finally, let's wrap up with the Best Political Current Affairs Book Award. The gold medal went to Carlos Lozada for his book, What Were We Thinking? A Brief Intellectual History of the Trump Era. The Washington Post's Pulitzer Prize-winning book critic uses the books about the Trump era to argue that the collective response to this presidency largely falls prey to the same blind spots, resentments, or righteousness even, that made it possible in the first place. Sounds like an interesting read for political enthusiasts. So, what are your thoughts? Have you already read, or at least heard of, any of these books before? Which one are you most excited about? Share your thoughts. Until next time. Don't forget to take good care of yourselves.